Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to design and make edge-lit acrylic signs using our ready-to-assemble Benchtop Pro CNC machine. We'll get to cutting in just a bit, but first let's take a look around and see what kind of signs people are making. Edge-lit acrylic signs have been popular for a while, but the new twist, I think, is adding three-dimensional attributes to them. For example, the perspective view on this Darth Vader mask, I think, adds a really interesting effect. You may be surprised how easy these signs are to make. Using the sign base and template from our Thingiverse project, linked here and in the description, we can focus on the etching for the acrylic glass itself. Let's assume we either lack the artistic ability, as in my case, or the time to draw this in a 3D perspective view. Thankfully, Vetrix VCarve Pro has a bitmap trace function that can be very powerful in cases like this. I'll show you how. Our time-saving trick involves Fusion 360. For my project, I like the idea of engraving the Benchtop Pro 3D model with a Benchtop Pro CNC machine. And right in the main canvas, I'll find a view that I like. And check the camera settings and make sure the camera is set to perspective and not orthographic. And change the visual style to wireframe, uh, just showing the visible edges. And this will give us the high contrast edge model that we can use for the bitmap trace. I'll do a screenshot using print screen and then I'll go to Microsoft Paint and we can paste Control V and crop this down to just have the Benchtop Pro in Canvas. Select the Benchtop Pro and use the crop button here. And now I can save this file to my local file system. Now I'll start vCarve Pro and create a new file. We know our acrylic glass is 13 by 13 and the actual thickness is 0.472. Hit OK. And the first thing I'll do is import the bitmap that we created. It's kind of the crux of our project here. Select that. And now it's time to use the trace bitmap function under create vectors. In this case, it's a nice and high contrast black and white image. Once I'm happy with the preview, I'll hit apply to create the vectors and close the command window. And I'll delete the background so that we're only left with the vectors we want. I'll select all the vectors and use close vector and I'll group these together just for convenience. And I'll use the alignment tools command to center the vector image. Now I think I'll create some text for the top of the sign and we'll do some on the bottom too. Up at the top, we'll kind of make this like an advertisement for the machines. And for now, I'll move it to the top to get a sense for what size I need. And we'll try a couple different values. 0.5 inches. Go a little bit bigger, I think. Yeah, maybe 0.6. It looks pretty good. And I'll just roughly center it. We'll center it for real in a little bit. And for this, I think I want to do a single line font. Those are kind of cool to do with a V carve bit. Yeah, it looks pretty neat. So that'll be a two line single line font, if that makes sense. So you can see the inside and outside of the letters are outlined. And I'll use the alignment tool again to center the title. I'll put our website at the bottom. So I'll use create text again and this time update it with our website cncrouterparts.com and I'll choose a smaller text height and again center it on the material using the alignment tool command. And I'll move up the graphic a little bit between the two titles. Now that I have what my sign should look like I need to do one more step to make it really pop on the acrylic. And that's to mirror it horizontally. So I'll go to the mirror command and flip horizontal. And the logic behind this is so that we're etching into the rear side of the acrylic. And that way when we display and light it, uh, that will be shown as extra depth and won't reflect off the back side when you're viewing it from the front. So just in general, it'll make it look that much better. Now I can set the toolpath. 
For this, I'll use the quick engrave strategy under toolpath operations. And make sure the depth is very slight, so 0 0.01 or 100th of an inch is perfect, I think. For tooling, I think the quarter inch V bit will be ideal. And this is a good time for me to verify the feeds and speeds. I'll update the name of the toolpath to something specific that I can remember. And this is the same name that I'll use when I export the G code in just a moment. Now I'll simulate the toolpath using the preview functionality. And that looks pretty good. And finally, I'll save the toolpath G code to my USB key, and then we'll head out to the shop. For work holding on this piece of acrylic, I'm going to use double sided tape. The trick is to not remove the backing from the acrylic. If you put double sided tape directly on it, you'll never get it back off again. I'll use parallel features in the spoil board to keep the acrylic square. I'll calibrate the Z-axis height with the Auto-Z touch plate, and off we go. I think I'll call that a wrap for the commentary and leave you to see the machine cut the sign. If you have any suggestions or comments, please leave those below. And if you like this and want to see more videos, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Thanks again. Go to cncrouterparts.com for more information on the machine that we used in this video. In this video, we used a Benchtop Pro CNC machine kit with the 4-axis digital plug-and-play NEMA 23 electronics.